He is the latest recruit to join the locomotive fleet. A Dapple GWR large prairie tank. Is this model any good? Well, sit back and relax and you'll find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and today we're here to take a look at the Dapple GWR Class 5101 Large Prairie Tank. Now this model has been out for a while. This one I have came from A&H Models. They only take payment over the phone, they don't have payment to do it online. But the service was fantastic because the day after I bought this model it arrived on my doorstep. That is some superb service that is and very speedy as well. I wasn't expecting it to have come this quickly. I was expecting to have waited a few days at least. So well happy that this has turned up quite earlier than I expected it to. The version I've gone for is 4134 in the lime green with the BR early crest. So we're going to get this model open and we're going to get it down on the layout. So here we have the model unboxed and down on the layout. Now at this point before I go any further I should say that these models do have a known fault and that is they have the tendency on occasion to stall on the frogs on sets of points and the reason for this is down to the rear pony truck that's the cause of the problem. Now what the problem seems to be is the rear axle catches on the stops basically and that causes the loco to lift causing the stalling now there is a fix for this, which is a simple thing to do, all you have to do is, if you are willing to do this yourself, is to modify the axle stops by filing them down a bit. A&H models have actually done this modification to all of their stock on the GWR Large Prairies, and they have done a video on this on the YouTube channel, which I shall put a link in the description below. And that seems to have cured the problem because I've had this model already running around on my layout a few times not once has it stalled on the frogs and the points so that just goes to show you doesn't it I mean really we shouldn't be having to rectify this issue ourselves or a retailer shouldn't have to do it either you know because when you get these models they should work perfectly straight out of the box but then on the other hand it is great to see that one retailer has gone out of their own way to rectify this problem for us so we can have a more reliable model running on our layouts. So if you are going to get one of these you know where to go. Go to a and Models because they have modified all their GWR Dapple Large Prairies fixing this issue. I'm not aware of any other retailers that have done it but a and Models definitely have. As for the model itself when it turned up, no quality control issues to report, so that's great. And out of the box, not only does it feel a very weighty locomotive, but also it runs superbly and very quietly as well. The mechanism on this model is just absolutely smooth. So moving on to the detail then on the model. First of all, as standard, we've got spool metal buffers. Not that I have any care for spoon buffers, but they're there anyway. But they are made out of metal, so that is nice. 
because metal buffers they are a bit better than plastic ones. As standard you've got name tension lock couplings which shall be removed and I'll be fitting them with couplings of my choice. On the buffer beam we have a coupling hook, a dummy one. You also have a pre-fitted vacuum pipe which is nice to see. You also have some nice rivet detail on the buffer beam as well. And on the running board we have got separately fitted handrails just here and separately fitted lamp irons as well as a wealth of rivet detail as well as these I believe they're called supports as well that attach under the smoke box they're there and they're separately fitted and they're made out of metal I believe as well moving to the smoke box door we have the locomotives number plate with the loco's number 4134 very crisply applied and the smart box door number plate itself has been neatly applied as well you have separately fitted smart box door darts and we have a BR shed code which is printed onto the smart box door that shed code reads 87E and that was the shed code for Swansea what I do like about this particular model is the running plate has been painted green which some large prairies did have this not all of them some of them had black running plates but some of them were painted green on some of them and I just think it looks nice in my opinion you've also got the lining that's been applied onto the cylinders as well that looks really nice and you've also got the drain cocks as well which have already been fitted for you they're not painted although it's something you could do yourself but at least you don't have to fit them yourself on this model you also have the sanding gear as well as you can see and just behind this footstep under the cab you can see we have separately fitted pipework detail one of the things that I love about this model is the safety valve and what I love about it is that it's been given that polished brass look rather instead of it just being just painted and that just makes it look so much better than it just being painted it looks more like the real thing as well and that just looks stunning you can also see we have separately fitted handrails there on top of the boiler the chimney cap in this case is supposed to be a copper cap chimney however that has not been given the polished look that's just been painted on it would have been nice if they had carried over the same effect they've done with the safety valve bonnet over onto the chimney cap but you know that's just a minor little thing to be honest we have a separately fitted metal handrail running along the boiler and smoke box on the locomotive we've also got some nice rivet detail on the smoke box as well and also just look at the detail that you get on the running board for example you've got the what looks to be a lubricator box of some form there and a lamp iron you also get some visible daylight under the boiler as well there is some detail under there they can't see much but it has been painted none of the inside detail there works but doesn't need to at least there's something there for you to look at when you see it on top of the water tanks we have the water filler caps they don't open but they don't really need to you've got some steam piping as you can see on top of the tanks attached to the safety valve bonnet and you've also got the washout plugs as well and then on top of the firebox you have the whistle which is just made out of plastic and painted but the whistles there they still look nice now the smoke box door on this model is removable as I shall demonstrate using this little tool that is supplied with the detail pack probably I'll be able to get it from this way actually where the hinges are there we go 
and that's removable so that you can fit a DCC decoder in there. You just pull out the PCB board and fit a decoder in. And I do quite like that feature. Not that I use DCC myself, but it makes it easier for those that do have it and use it. The coal load in this model is also removable and you can remove it using the tool that you get in the accessory bag for the smoke box door to remove it. Right, so there we go, that's now removed. Now, for some reason, off camera, when I used the needle to poke it down into the gap, it managed to lift the coal load out much easier than this tool does. The cab roof is also removable, and you can use this little tool to help remove it. Which I will demonstrate to you. Just like so. And out comes the roof. And then, you can see all of the cab interior detail inside on the back head. You've got the regulator, reverser, the dials, the gauges, all the pipework etc. It's all been painted and the way it has been painted and done it looks stunning and I always like to see the cab interior painted on the back head adds to the more detail and realism of the model. And I do like this feature of the cab being removable because that way, removing the roof, if you want to fit crew inside the cab, that allows you to do this a lot more easier. Also, whilst the cab roof is off, I can show you that this model does have a flickering firebox. And that is a great feature. I know some people might think it's a gimmick, but I rather like it. Right, now that I've fitted the roof back on, we can now turn attention to, to some more of the details on this model. We have separately fitted handrails on the end of the water tanks here by the cab doors and on the cab sides and bunker as well as the bunker steps for the crew to climb up to get up to the bunker. There's a, there's a separately fitted handrail on the roof on the cab and also there's the wealth of rivet detail as well that you get on the bunker and the side tanks. You also have the GWR number plates with the locos running number 4134 crisply applied on the bunker sides you do also get plastic cab sides to go over the printed ones but they're not etched ones like I say they're just bits of plastic with the numbers printed onto them I think some etched number plates would look a bit better moving to the rear of the bunker again we have lots more rivets You've got separately fitted handrails and lamp irons, as well as, again, more bunker steps, pre-fitted vacuum pipe, metal sprung buffers like there were on the front of the loco, and again, slim tension lock and M coupling. Now we move on to the livery application, which I think looks stunning. No imperfections or blemishes anywhere on the paintwork. It's a very nice and even and smooth coat of paint. And I really like the shade of green as well on this model. I think it looks really nice. And you've also got the lining on the boiler bands, the water tanks and on the bunker. I mean the lining is just stunning and it's been beautifully applied. Plus you've got the BR early emblem which again that's been stunningly applied as well. And that looks fantastic as well. Just moving to this side of the loco very quickly, under the running plate, as you can see, we have this separately fitted bit of pipe work. And again, that's a separately fitted bit of detail, not moulded, and that looks stunningly applied as well. You can also see the rivets on the running plate as well. So I've pretty much covered all of the detail on this model. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get on to the running session. And so I'm going to get this loco pulling my rake of maroon Mark 1s around the layout. Which I think that'll be quite nice. And then, when that's over, we can come on to my final conclusion.
So we've seen the dappled GWR Large Prairie running around the layout with the Maroon Mark 1s. So now we can come on to my conclusion for the model. Now honestly I do think it is a great model. I know that it does have its flaw. That's the issue with the rear pony truck but that's a simple fix. It can be resolved as you've seen with this model. And that fix does work because I've not had any issues with this model running on the layout. And I do take my hat off to A&H models for rectifying that issue on their stock of dappled GWR large prairies. But regardless, if you're willing to get one and resolve the issue yourself, then you can do that. Again, I'll link the video that A&H have put up on their YouTube channel on how to fix this issue or if you want to get one that already has the issue fixed then go to A&H models and buy one because then you won't have to sort that issue out for yourself but you know when it is running faultlessly with the issue resolved it is a great model but you know regardless I've not had any issues with it because well I bought one that had the issue resolved so I think it's a cracking model I really do so if you are willing to spend the money on one of these regardless whether you want to fix the issue yourself or buy one that's the issue resolved then go to A&H models so yeah I think it's a great bit of kit this when the issue has been fixed so that's all I've got time for in today's video I hope you've enjoyed it as ever if you like what you see then subscribe to the channel, smash the like button and feel free to check out all my other videos that I've got on the channel. But until then, I'll see you for the next video. Take care. Bye for now.